starting to the bottom right is our Protoss player for Team Zubu. It is... Ajubu Genius! Genius really needs this win. Trying to prove himself for his team, of course, today at his first performance. To the top left, cross position, we have his opponent. As the Zerg player, is also in for this. LGIM Bjorn! Really likes his 10 Overlord. There it is again, not in the 10th pool. Now, I was just gonna just state briefly, we talked about this before. When you are someone like Genius, you need this win desperately. But you know it doesn't matter for your opponent. And some people might say, well that gives him a false security rate, his opponent's not really gonna try it. The thing is, his opponent's probably going to do something risky, something crazy, and probably a different weird all-in or an aggressive build that's what usually happens. We've already seen it today, we've seen it with Squirtle already. So that actually makes you have to play defensively and really scared. And another thing is that it's not only enough for Odinus to win this game, he has to rely on Bombatoon. That's the same situation for Hero. Both of them are in the same boat. They have to have Bomber take down Bjorn. If Bjorn wins his TVT, then all these games don't matter. Yep. Very true. Pool goes down first for Bjorn. That's now the ordinary. Especially for Team Liquid fans, this is a horrible position. Hero has done his part. He yes. has won his games late. He started with the 0-3 and was able to win the next two, but so far he can't... He it's cannot take... Him. Yeah, exactly, it's not up to him anymore. He just has to watch. Ooh, very late Nexus for Genius. Very late. Almost 100 minutes late. And what is Bjall going to do this time? Yeah, I'm curious. I think we're going to see another aggressive attack, but... Genius is actually, even though he was delayed with his next, the reason why is because he was microing so much to delay Bjell's uh, hatchery, and it was pretty successful. This is so intense. This is really crazy. Every single game matters now. The two could ask players, uh, Bjell and Bomber. But who is going to get the third spot here? What is Bjell going to do? We've seen such amazing play by him today. Really, really crazy games. He has done all the right decisions. Can he now win it against a Genius? This would mean that Bjorn advances. Yes, very true. That's what Bjorn is hoping for. You know, players who have the first three letters together have to stick together. <laughs> the three Bs. The B BYU. They got to stick together. And I'm not talking about that college in, uh, I guess it's Ohio. No, it's not Ohio, it's uh, Utah. I so. can't help that, you and that one. I'm like, I don't know why I said Ohio, it's like not even right at all, but... He had a chance <laughs> of running in with the Zerglings here, realizes a tiny little bit too late. Saves the Zerglings, though. Yep. And it, we'll see the core drop. What's the strat for Genius? I expect Stargate. Even though this is not <laughs> the map for Stargate usually, I think we'll see it. Will his Stargate addiction get the better of him? Or will he just go and take his third base? I'm opting for the third. I'm opting for the third as well. But just he has to Stargate. Play. Well, I mean, Stargate into third. Uh, but in this case, he could also do the Void Ray all in with plus one zealots. And he's a recovering Void Ray addict. So it happens. Bjell, on the other hand, still has not taken gas. So yeah. Like, he wants to, after his, I don't want to call it a silly game, but a. On orthodox play against Bomber in a game that didn't matter, I think he wants to say, well, you know, I know I toyed around on that one a little bit, uh, but this one I'm serious. To be completely frank, I don't think that he toyed around at all. He saw the third command center, and I actually think that Bomber was so close of being uh, annihilated. He's he lucky it. he saw that bane in them, that's for sure. Exactly. Think about what we saw. We have the Stargate, by the way, so you were perfectly right, Wolf. Um, we saw him scan at the natural, and he just got a glimpse of the baning nest. Barely. He didn't scan his the main base. If that baning nest is in a different position, and if he scans the main, he sees the tech that Bial was faking, and he's like, "Well, you're gonna tech. Everything's gonna be fine. I might have to deal with mutilisks later, but for now, I'm good." And when he saw the baning nest, he built four bunkers in total. If those bunkers are there, Bial wins. Yeah. So I don't think he was fooling around. He was playing a more aggressive and a little bit more risky style, but he tried to even fake bomb out. So he definitely gave it his all, even though the strategy was a bit unorthodox. Right. I don't mean fooling around in the sense of he didn't care, just. Trying to put it all on a big attack rather than playing for the late game, which I think we're going to see here. He's, he's now taking his gas, he's getting the evolution chamber, getting his drones up. He's seen the Stargate. Robo goes down for Genius, which lends itself towards taking that third. 
you don't have to do it this way on this map, but this is the safest possible way to play Bright Genius. And considering Abiel's aggressive nature and considering the game doesn't matter for him, I respect Genius' choice. The problem for Genius, of course, with timing attacks in this game would be that we have cross position. Which yep. is very annoying because the distance is huge in the tomb. Every time the Phoenix shoots the overlord, a little bit of blood comes out. <laughs> Sure, man. Notice that animation. It's a little bit, a little bit sad. Like it makes it. If you don't think about that, if you're playing on medium settings or something, you're like, ah, the Overlord gets shot. It doesn't really matter until he blows up and dies. But no, man, the Overlord feels pain every time until he dies. He wishes like five things would be killing him, but instead, it's one slow, painful process. Now that probe was killed. This is important twofold because it delays Genius and Nexus, and it tells Biel that Genius has taken one. That's a weird that warp is, rhythm. You know what that actually is? That looks a little bit like the... Is he going to uh, go for a gateway attack, trying to block the ramp with the... Uh, yeah, there they are. Additional gateways. Yeah. He wants to uh, just clean the map of Overlords, make sure that there's no vision for Bjal, and, and the then go yeah. for the warp -ins. The thing is, Bjal saw the probe that he killed, so he probably thinks GS is just going to take a third base. So this could be really good for GS. Ten more drones going down for Bjal. This is not really the map where you would expect this. This was a strategy that JYP and other players used on uh, Metropolis. But now... That could be very dangerous for Bjol. He has a macro hatch. Where's the macro hatch? It's uh -oh. actually natural and not in the main base. He sees the warp prism now, though. Yeah. He spots the warp prism in uh, the middle of the map, so he should be aware what's going on here. This is a strategy that hasn't been used on this map too often, but it's one that Bjol definitely encountered in the past on different maps. When Phoenix goes down, he needs to protect his overlords, because if you lose your overlords as well, you can't reinforce. That's something we've seen already this week. Genius with a ton of zealots. He says, I'm no longer the Void Ray, I am the Phoenix. A lot of roaches for Bial as he realizes what's going on. A spying crawler is being built. He sees all these units. The plus one attack upgrade isn't done. Oh, these links should not be fighting here. The links are just trying to see to what's going time. on. He knows what's happening here. Can he stop it? Genius is going for it. Genius does not have a lot of stalkers. He has a thousand gas, but. He has actually no stalkers. He has a thousand gas, but he can't spend anymore because he spent all of his resources on zealots. And now the roach is just stopping. He's going to go for a sentry drop here. And here comes the force field. Here's the force field, and here is the warp in. But the warp prism has to reposition itself as He's suddenly the spore puller does damage. Uh, the sentry died. He could have picked up a sentry as well, but can he get into the main base again? He's trying to take down those sentries. Here comes the next force field. Exactly the strategy that we talked about. He's doing it. The probes come off the mineral line. The drones, that is. He's trying to surround the stalkers and he gets them. Zerglings are going in as well. Hero is cheering for genius, but the Protoss player is struggling. Yeah, he's a little bit too late here. He spent too many resources on those zealots. Oh my god, this does not work well for genius so not far. at all. Oh. This yeah, is bad for Genius and for Hero. Bjorn is sitting on the bench and he is jumping up and down. He's happy. Everything is going well for Bjorn. And if Bjorn wins the game, then Bjorn gets the third spot in the group. He gets the wildcard position that allows yeah. him to play on Friday. Genius is trying to take the third base, but it's, it's actually just something that he had in his head. I like when your mom talks about she wants to open up that cooking, that place, she wants to open a restaurant someday. She probably won't actually do it. And Genius can't actually take this Nexus. Look at how desperate those Phoenixes look trying to pick up these roaches. Genius has so many sentries now, but Biel is actually just going to walk away and get his best without not care. He's lacking the tech, he's lacking his uh, third base, and there's a fourth coming up for Biel now. Bial knows exactly how far ahead he is, and he's acting on it. He he's pushing in, he's trying to get it. Well, he doesn't quite get it, but he can they, back up and get the investors. Yeah, The Immortal is there, the force field protects the forge. But 83 harvesters against 58, a three base economy, soon to be a four base economy. And, uh, well, that is bad, bad news for Genius and for Hero. Yeah, there's the Nexus placement. And Hero is walking into the studio with his gear. He's starting to set up his equipment. But he, of course, observed this game up to this point, and he knows that it's not going to be easy it's for Genius to good, come back. But he is, he is now getting that Nexus, and Bill has backed off. This gives Genius another chance. It's a shot in the dark, but if he can turtle on three bases and get that maxed out army and hit a time before Broodlords, yeah, everything is off. And it's going to be much harder to do so. It's going to actually also rely on a little bit of luck and perfect force seals and great micro. 
He's also at cross position, just makes things a little bit hard for him. But the game is okay. not over yet. Blink comes down, range, plus one armor. Okay, but let's think for a moment what can happen here. We uh, can see... Uh, can Genius really hit this three base timing with 11 gates? I don't think so. Not 10 or 11 gates, sure. that doesn't work for him. So what can he do? I feel the only chance for him is now to macro it up like a demigod and uh, go for a four base economy and try to go into a, a mothership play and hope for a good vortex. Another thing that could happen is a Bill gets a little bit over eager and steps too far towards Genius' base. Genius takes a great defensive engagement, which I don't think Bill is going to do based on how he's moving right now. And not based on how he's played today. No. He's shown us to be a player that knows about the strength, that, that has a very good grasp on what the situation is, is like. This is just pressure. He's not actually going to commit to this. He doesn't have to. There's no reason to. Genius has to hope to max out and to face a maxed out Zerg player and beat his army. Yep. He has the turtle here. And that's a little bit of poking action by Bill. He's never going to let those investors get picked off. If he does, then that's the only way Genius can get back into this game, most likely. Genius's upgrades are even behind. He's normally at this time in the game at 60 minutes, you'd want to be finishing up plus three or at least be finished with it a few minutes ago. But in this case, he's at halfway with his plus two. You know, Hero actually walked out of the studio again. I'm wondering if he just walked into the booth, grabbed his equipment, and then it sits now in the backstage area because it's like, well, apparently I don't have to play again. Well, we shall see. Two yes, they have coming out. Proto players around the world. Send their energy, send their vibes. <laughs> yeah. Trying to go for the spirit bomb here. Posting angrily on the forums. <laughs> <laughs> That's more likely. <laughs> <laughs> what is more likely to happen on the internet? I don't positive know if the warp prism is strong enough. Positive thoughts or just raging uh, on the forums? Hmm. It's not fair, zealots cost 100 minerals. Well, plus two is finishing for Genius, and he is moving across to take that fourth base. He's Will he trying. actually attack? He's, it looks like it, and he yeah. really looks like he's going to hit a timing here, or trying to. He's not maxed out just yet, but we have so much yes. for Bial on the map. He has the first Corruptors, he's getting more great Aspires on its way. He's trying to hit a pre brutal timing, and I'm not quite sure if he's ready. Look at the bank for Bial, and he has also the Lava. Here we he go. has 73 Lava. The Buggles are amazing here, and so are the Corruptors position, but Genius has the perfect composition, and all of his Colossi weren't even here yet. Now they join in, Genius has a chance. He maxed out, he did what I was talking about, he sat there on three bases, he turtled. The bank for Bjell though, it may be too much for him, the Colossi the are falling. It's crazy, and with the Colossi gone, those 50 Zerglings... Genius cannot wait, he has to go now! Those 50 Zerglings will have a great day, and now suddenly the Great Aspire is gone. Even if he loses the fourth base, he has a fifth to the top right. Blank. 200 supply again for Bjell, he's going in for the final, the last Colossus is gone. Genius needs to use that warp in. He's got an additional gateway finishing up right now. He doesn't have much of a bank like you said. The, the Zerg Zerglings! The He's links got good links so far. There's not that many fungals left. The Zerglings are about to be annihilated, but still the next round he of needs units to take is out ready for Yul. He misses the warp prism. Now he's losing the investors. But you're still right. He needs to take out this base. He needs to keep pushing. In fact, he may even skip this base. His bank is gone. His bank is gone. Yul is now down to 500 minerals. He's depleting the minerals rapidly. He's still a so gas. Critical. The brute lords, that's the scary part for Genius now. Can yeah. he deal with them? The thing is, he doesn't have any Colossi either, so the lack of Corruptors is not really going to be something that Biel is worried about. He has the Stalk account, though. He has 26 Stalkers, and he takes down the base to the top right. This is his chance. Biel is maxed out again, and Biel uh -oh. is moving in. Is he really fighting here? No, he's waiting. He's waiting Genius. for those brute lords. Genius is such a smart player. He may have been able to push his way back into this game. Biel still has a, a strong advantage, but Genius, with this army, it's all about the micro. And the Brew Lords are finished. A few more of them about to finish now. He needs good fungals. The Zealots are actually falling instantly here. The Zealots are falling, and here come the Brood Lords. Here come the Infestors. He's building five more. They will this be ready so in a close. second. There needs to be a forward blink at some point. When is he going to go for it? Uh, he blinks back, but he can't blink back against the Brood Lords. The Broodlings are stacking up. It looks like Bjell has done it. He's pushing it back. Good fungals here. Some of those stalkers isolated to the north, and the Brood Lords. They are safe. They are totally safe. A cancel on the warp engine kills the prism and genius it's is out. GG! Bjorn takes the wildcard spot. Genius and Hero are in code A. Yal takes this game and both Bodos players will have to fight in code A next season. Bjorn gets another chance on Friday. The first Terran to advance.
meeting three Zerg players and of course the third place of tomorrow's group. But for Genius and Hero, it's all over. You know, I have to say, though, I was really impressed by all three Pros players play, especially Genius and SOS in this group. The, the fact of the matter is, though, their opponents were just on another level. Yeah, they played really well today, especially Bial impressed. He did so in the GSTL for Team Fnatic already, but today he's showing he was showing us his strength. He takes his games and advances to Code S, and he deserves the spot. Yeah, Estas Bomber, both of them excelling today. The last game not needed. We don't need our Terran versus Terran. So Protoss players make it up the majority of today's group, and all three of them falling yeah. out. That means. With the process that we fell out yesterday, we only have two additional process, making a total of four processes so far in Code S. Exactly. From all the up and down matches, if I'm not mistaken, two Protoss players have advanced, three Terran players and three Zerg players. Yeah, and tomorrow we have a classic Protoss player, one of the first foreigners to come out here, live in Korea, try to make the pro gaming life work back on Team Liquid in the old days. Huck was here, did really well, the first foreigner to get out of an up and down group. And maybe, just maybe, he will be the pros yep. who can get through. First of all, we're having a quick shot at today's match results before we are having another look at tomorrow's group. So today, we had these six players, the wildcard spot going to Bjorn and Bomber and Bial. They advance. Bomber with a 4 0 record, took the game against Bial here. And, uh, well, great performance by uh, all three of them today. Yep. Also by our losers here, but it was just not enough. Bomber was totally dominant yeah. in the group, looking like very good, extremely consistent, and this could be his season. I think just watching him play and what everyone has been saying outside of this league. Even you know we've been hearing whispers. Bomber's looking really good right now. He's looking unstoppable. Well, I think he could be. This could be one of his seasons. Bomber's to go problem far. is that he always takes good positions that nobody uh, realizes and recognizes. He was doing good at MLG. He took took um, he took second place. At what was the tournament in Texas where you played where Stefano got first? Lone actually, Star Clash. I think yeah, Lone Star Clash. Thank you very much. But every single time he takes the third or a second place, people don't really talk about it, and it's a bit under the radar. So he is done, is doing well in the GSL now, and he deserves it. And this is tomorrow's group. tomorrow's group is stacked. That's T Center Fantasy Finale flying and hug. It's going to be a pretty awesome group. Every group we've had has been yeah. awesome. Everybody, I think, is looking at Huck. What is he going to do? He's been a little bit absent from the GSL for a long time. But what is he going to prove tomorrow? We've got big-time fan favorite Fantasy in there. Nesty, people call him the god of the universe, the creator of the world. And Center, a newly departed TSL member. And, you know, those two crosses yeah. in the bottom left, Finale and Flying, they're, they're kind of nuts players. The fact alone that tomorrow's group, even though it has such a stacked lineup, is probably the weakest group of uh, all the up and down groups that we had agree. so far. If you talk about the accomplishments in uh, the last six months. So, yeah, the most recent results yeah. of these players are probably the weakest out of any but group. Still, with those names, it's like a crazy group regardless. This just shows how intensely stacked. It's like, who's been training? That's what we're going to find out. It's just crazy to see that this group is considered to be the weakest, and this shows how stacked the entire up and down groups were up to this point. Tomorrow is going to make no, yeah, it's going to be no different. It's going to be a very, very interesting group, and let's see who's going to get out ahead. I have no idea who's going to yeah, advance from this group. It's going to be very exciting. So, guys, we'll be back tomorrow. I hope that you enjoyed today's show, and we'll see you tomorrow with the last group of the up and downs before we head into the wildcard group on Friday.